Hey, what's up everybody? Hello everybody. I'm Sam. Wes. Tom. And today we're going to be going over some VR uh, camera refactor uh, tips and tricks and some, oh yeah, tips, tricks, performance. And Wes is going to be going over some interaction elements that we are doing for our carnival games. So with that little intro out of the way, let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to talk about the VR camera refactor. Um, this is new to 411, and what this allows you to do is it allows you to seamlessly attach objects to your HMD and then have them follow a one-to-one, one-to-one, uh, one -one, not ratio, but I uh, can't think of the word that I want to use. Uh, basically, it allows them to follow directly with the camera, so as you move your HMD around like this, you'll see those objects move in the world. Um, the other cool thing you can do with it is you can now get the position of the player just by querying the camera where the camera is in the world. So uh, I'm going to pop over here really quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and get everything started. So we've got a brand new VR set up over here. And it looks like my... Oops. Wrong way to hand. It looks like my thing got killed, I think. Yeah. Wes has accidentally stomped over mine, so just yeah, one second. <laughs> One second here. Sometimes we uh, we have it up and going, but yeah, it's you know, our new VR setup over there. So we yeah, it's, so we're working working the kinks out of it over here. So, <laughs> all right, put those out of the way. I'm gonna load my level. Okay, so um, levels are simple. Um, basically, what 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 I did just to show off how easy this is is I made a little. Um, just a couple of volumes, and then when you look to the left, it's gonna slide something over here and then bring it in its opacity. And then when you look, uh, or sorry, to the right, and when you look to the left, it's gonna do the exact same behavior. Um, let me just go ahead and jump in really quick. And of course, my VR preview is not working because I have two versions of the editor open, I think. So let's try this and see if this is gonna work now. So one of the other cool things about the, the camera refactor is its ability, its ease of use, because you literally just have to make whatever you want to follow the camera a child component of the camera actor. Mm -hmm. So now I got my VR preview back up. Let's uh, go out here. We'll pop into VR mode. We'll put my HMD on. Now you can see if I look over here, you see I get a little screen that comes in on this side, and then as I look away, it uh, disappears so that you know I could look all the way over there or something like that, and then do the same thing for the left. Um, and this is very, very simple to set up. You see it goes in, goes back, goes in, goes back. So you're thinking is that you can use this for like HUD elements or any kind of... Yeah, uh, Ian shot from design. one of the other, uh, mm -hmm. one of the other... Uh, uh, Technical writers. Yeah, technical Content writers, writers, learning resources <laughs> teams. Sorry, my brain is just all over the place today. Uh, he had mentioned uh, one game, I think it was Elite, Elite Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, mm -hmm. Elite Dangerous, where you look over at the HUD, and then that, whatever element you were looking at in the HUD becomes the main focus of your UI for that particular interaction. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yep, that sounds really complicated, but with this new VR camera refactor, it's actually really easy. So I'm going to open up my character blueprint here and show everybody what I'm talking about. So we've got some timelines going on here, but majority of this is in the event graph. So basically what happens is I have a, uh, let me go over here my viewport so you can see. So I've got these two, uh, two boxes right here. There's one here and there's one here, or collision, um, uh, collision volumes. And basically all I'm doing is an on begin overlap, we're gonna do a timeline, um, which is gonna move that static mesh forward and then Right down over here, what it's going to do is, as it moves it down, I used a material in, uh, parameter collection to power this. So it's going to go from 0 to 1 and then back down to 0. So you see it, and then as you move your head away, it goes back and then becomes transparent again. And this is literally the entire graph right here. I'm going to move this over a little bit. So this is it right here, the thing that I highlighted. And then uh, I just duplicated this, and I made one for the left that I did for the right. And that, that's it. Um, to show you how the camera refactor works, basically, let me go to my camera here. We're going to add a component. And, oops, and we're just going to add a, uh, we'll add a cube. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit since it's out in front of me. Now, I need to make sure that the cube goes on top of the camera, like I just grabbed it and dragged it on there. Now I'm going to compile and save. 
And when I go to launch VR again, you see I have a cube now that follows me wherever I happen to look around. So he's totally attached to me. And this works with any component. I put uh, some cable actors on that, uh, and then it was like moving my head around like I had some dreadlocks on. Didn't work exactly like dreadlocks, but I was just trying interesting things to, uh, to see how far you can push this system. And literally, it's anything that you can attach to your camera component. Uh, this camera right here, you can see I already have three. I have the right HMD box, the left HMD box, and this cube. And I'll just delete the cube and recompile, and you'll see if we relaunch. Voila, no cube in the face anymore. Um, and it's, it's literally that simple. Now, obviously, there's going to be another way that you might want to do this. Um, you know, if you're going into production, you might want to have your engineers take what you've made and then, you know, clean it up a little bit inside C++. But as, as, a, um, as a designer or an artist or something like that, this interaction, be, being able to get things to attach them so that they, uh, they're attached to the camera, it's, was super hard before. It was a couple more steps. And this way, the entire thing is streamlined. So yeah, it's very quick and easy to prototype stuff. There's actually a question from Arial App. Uh, how would you do this with a UMG HUD? Uh, you're using static meshes, right? Yeah, I'm just using straight up <laughs> static mesh because I, as with anything, mm -hmm. I had no idea how this worked. So I literally just started with Perfect. getting something to move, yeah. or, or I got. Uh, you saw my my volumes there. I literally just got something to move. And then I started to build upon it. And the next thing would be to add a UMG yeah, 3D it's widget. It's actually very simple for UMG because of the 3D widgets. You could just add a 3D widget or a widget component inside of your blueprint. And widget components themselves have the ability to generate overlap events. So mm -hmm. it's just swapping that static mesh out with a widget component yep. to do the same yep. thing. So, so and um, let me see, what else do I got here for you guys? Just cover my notes really quick to make sure we've got everything. So we talked about, this is a 4.11 only feature. So if you're at 4.10 or 4.9 or whatever, you will need to upgrade or take the uh, requisite uh, VR code to bring yourself up to get this. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's, it's literally as easy as just making whatever it is you want to follow the HMD, the child of your camera component. Um, and also on 4.11, this feature works right out of the box. There's nothing that you have to do to enable this or any INI settings or any checkmark boxes, it's already enabled for you right out of the box. So uh, there's also going to be a document uh, about this called Camera Refactor that you will find in the VR forum subsection or the VR documentation section uh, in the general information. Cool. Um, so and if you've got any problems or questions, please uh, submit them to Answer Hub or the forums so we can track them and make sure everything's working good. So um, let's see if anybody's got any questions right now. The only question is one that I don't actually know. What is the timeline for the release of 4.11 proper? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not 100% of that. Yeah. So, um, so with that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and talk with, talk with Tom really quick. Um, Tom is going to... Let's let's grab, should I grab this? Yeah, go ahead and okay. grab this. And Shelly, can we pop over to the, uh, the other screen? The other computer? There we go. And then... That's one. Oops, uh, that's your project. Just minimize that. One second. Sure, okay. It's going to get funky for a second. Yeah, just grab the, uh, just grab Pearl. There you go. Okay. Uh, so if you haven't seen this guide already, if you're looking to get into uh, VR, I recommend just going through this guide. I talk about setting up your VR device how to launch uh, your, your project with VR. A couple of really useful uh, blueprint notes, for example, how to reset your HMD. Uh, for HGZ5, this actually only works in 4.11 to reset your position. So if you're, uh, for example, you have a vehicle VR template and you start out your game, it might put, uh, put your head in the back seat. <laughs> so you need to call reset orientation and position so you actually are <laughs> the front like seat driver. Back, back seat driver. That would be actually a <laughs> cool game, absolutely. Uh, so there's a couple, a couple of useful <laughs> functions there. Talk about how to set up the motion controls. This is all covered on the official doc, so it's mostly just a, a redirection to. This the was actually box. I. You made this for one of the game jams, didn't you? Uh, yeah, this? we made this for the uh, for the uh, VR hackathon in, in Brussels. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then I used a lot of the stuff that you have in here. I've actually rolled into the official documentation. Right, right, right. Sweet. So you can find a lot of this stuff there uh, if you're looking to do VR and C++, I have a couple of things that you need to do, like include some of the uh, modules and headers to get you started. 
because that can save you a lot of headaches. And then finally, one very important thing to consider with uh, VR is performance. So if you have never used any of the profiling tools, um, we have a bunch of CPU and GPU profiling tools, especially the GPU profiler is going to uh, be very helpful. Yeah, I mean, I know we, we, we pretty much harp on performance in each stream. We always talk about the profile, but the reason we do that is because performance, it is, it is very, very easy to get up to your required mm -hmm. FPS at the beginning of your project, but to maintain that is rather difficult. And that's why we always are talking about performance profiling because Absolutely. you need to do it every day, All even a couple, time. times of, <clears throat> a couple times a day. And it's not, it's not ridiculously hard to use the performance filer performance profiler to figure out where your bottlenecks are within your level. Yeah. yeah, and definitely a couple of things are usually problematic from the get-go, like ambient occlusion is mm -hmm. very heavy. Mm -hmm. Screen so space AO. Yeah, that's very easy to just disable right away. Uh, you know, other things like temporal AO you should just leave on because that is has a very big visual impact. So even though it has cost, just leave it on and just try to figure out what else you can get, gain some uh, points. Um, and translucency is a big, yeah. big thing in the VR. So, for example, over here you can see the the uh, elemental demo scene. It has a lot of like low hanging fog. If you look at the shader complexity, the bottom one, uh, green is good, red is bad, and white is just downright awful. <laughs> uh, white so is actually it. <laughs> Last time I checked, this white is over at a thousand instructions plus it, to render that particular. Well, I could see it was even two and a half thousand. Wow, two and a half thousand. From what I could see, uh, so yeah, definitely you need to you need to make sure you don't do a lot of overdrawing because yeah, it's going to be super uh, super complex. Uh, if you're looking for a list of render commands, I've listed these. Uh, Nick Whiting put these up on in his uh, Oculus Connect talk. Mm -hmm. yeah, we actually have these on the uh, official docs. Now. Official docs now too. Well, that's good. Um, so a lot of them would make sense. If they don't, you know, I'll probably add a little bit more information to these to what they actually mean. Uh, because that would be helpful. Um, so yeah, I guess that's that's a reduction. You know, just check it out, have a look. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment. I uh, I can help you out. What's the actual address for this? Uh, it's tomloman.com slash VR guide, and then we'll redirect you to the, the okay. to the full link. Uh, we'll see if we can get Alex. Uh, we gave the links to Alex. <laughs> yeah, uh, if he can populate there. those in the text for you guys, so you can come um, right to this one. You also have the uh, which is about to click on now. The hey, I know that guy. Uh, so what, I, what I've been working on, and I'm still working on this, is the uh, a couple of VR templates and samples. Mm -hmm. um, so you can grab these now. Uh, they're not completely done yet, but you can already you know get a get a sense of how, how things should be implemented in C++. Uh, I have the vehicle template that works with uh, VR, uh, and I'm working on a shooter shooter gallery. Uh, that shooter gallery. That's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun because it's, it's gonna be like a small mini game. And you have uh, your weapon, mm -hmm. you have your magazines, mm -hmm. and again, using the motion controllers, you can reload your weapon by picking up a magazine, clipping it into your weapon, and removing it again if you if you run out of bullets, and you just have a 360 arena of you know uh, targets you can shoot. That sounds like a lot uh, of with fun. With 3D audio, which I think we will talk about today as well. 3D audio. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna touch on that one next. Okay. Uh, oh, next time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It could be its own stream. Yeah, that's gonna be its own okay, stream. Okay. There is uh, pretty, pretty there are some some new introductions <laughs> and some three D spatialization and things that are coming out with four eleven. But like Wes said, that could use a stream all into its own. I I went to go dig into it and I was yeah. like, this is turning into a mountain. So I need to <laughs> to scale back a little bit and uh, you know do a little bit more of a, a targeted one on that one. Okay, sure. Uh, well, I, I guess that's it for, for at least the getting started part. So, uh, okay. Is there any specific questions about um, profiling or anything? Let me see what I've got here so far. We've got a couple questions. <clears throat> Good profiling is, is very new to a lot of people. So, yeah. You know, yeah uh, and you can uh, get access the profiler at any time by hitting Control Shift Comma on your keyboard. Um, or the command Profile GPU is mm -hmm. one word. That's if you forget, forget the hotkey profile GPU. Mm -hmm. Here's a, I'm just going to jump into one of the first questions we got here. It says, is there a special setup for multiplayer with motion control games? In my 1v1 game, we ran into a problem. Ah, I know this question. Where one player will control the hands of both players in a match. <laughs> that sounds, uh, that sounds or familiar. Awesome feature. <laughs> or awesome feature. Yeah. Uh, 
And I did talk about this uh, bug in the beginning of the last VR stream, and this is unfortunately a bug that we ran into. Yeah. Um, we had everything set up to do multiplayer, and I was like, hey, Wes, check this out. And I started making baskets for Wes through my motion, <laughs> through my player, using my arms and hands like that. So it could be a game jam idea. Yeah, I know, right? right. Yeah, this question, was, this question was game. posted in the forums. I believe I responded to it. There is a code side fix for this uh, in 4.11. Uh, the 4.11 preview, the code side fix is in. However, we're, what we were working on was done entirely in Blueprint, so I haven't figured out the best way to tackle that from a Blueprint perspective. Uh, but if you hop into the form thread for this particular Twitch stream, mm -hmm. you'll see the code snippet that yep. uh, Nick, Nick Whiting provided. Yeah, we're, we're talking with Nick or uh, some of the other guys on the VR team, because Nick's a very hard man to get a hold of these days, a lot. Um, to try to figure out how we can uh, get a multiplayer game with two yeah. sets of motion controllers. So it is something that we're actively pursuing. It's something that we want to get in there. So as soon as we figure everything out, um, get it all tied up, we'll uh, bring it on one of our next streams. It, if not the next one, then the one after that. Um, here's another one that I wanted to address, which I see this going around the forums a lot. Also, is it possible to test a multiplayer VR game with a single PC with one Oculus and one set of Hydra controllers? So, when you do VR, you are pushing your computer to the limit. So tr try and render two windows that are both two, 2K and above. That's just, your computer's just not going to be able to handle that. Um, and one of the problems that I was talking to Ryan Brooks about is when you use the Oculus and, say, the Razer, they're both in different spaces. Mm -hmm. So you could have the Oculus headset being in world space while the Razer stuff is in local space. Mm -hmm. um, this means that you'll get a little bit of a drift between the two. So you're eventually, while you're playing, because of rendering errors and things, or uh, precision errors, you might have your motion your hand might be drifting out this way and you might have to pull it back in or you might not be able to pull it back in. So it is totally possible to do that. There's a lot that you have to account for when you use something like the Vive or Steam VR with everything in its own same space that you don't have to account for. So again, totally possible uh, to use a, a, a Vive or a, a Rift with the Razer, but you're going to introduce some problems there because they are, they are not within the same ecosystem so they're not going to play very well. But he, uh, I think he's asking also about uh, if that would just work if the uh, controls are correct, correctly assigned to, the, to the multiple instances on one machine, mm -hmm. correct? And I don't know if that if you can have multiple we, instances of your game, one we, is VR, one is non-VR. We case. haven't had a chance. So thinking about how controlling is working in my head right now, that should be possible. But we haven't tried it. Like, for example, yeah. I could probably have Wes assign something to the trigger and then me assign something to the trigger on my Xbox 360 controller and have yeah, some should, similar That should totally be feasible. But he, I think he was asking two instances of VR. Yeah, two instances of VR, that's just not, not going to happen. Test that. Um, test it, would, it would help if, if one instance of the VR, or one instance is not VR, so you can yeah. at least mm -hmm. see if, mm -hmm. if the stuff is probably mm -hmm. replicated because I think that's what he's interested in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Which you should can, totally be doable. You yeah. can launch a standalone game and then launch a version of the editor. VR yeah, or vice yeah, versa. yeah. So you should, should do that, but you out. definitely wouldn't be able to have two VR preview <laughs> windows on your computer unless you did some crazy magic with your graphics cards and windows and stuff like that. So, um, so what else have we got here? All right, well, here's one. Um, what about Google Cardboard? And to that, I have to say, no new updates at this time. Sorry, guys. Um, I know it's something that everybody's been asking about and everybody wants. Um, we just, it, it is something that's been on our radar. It's just, you know, it's just not here yet. And that's, that's all the information that I, I have at this time. But as soon as I know some more about it, you guys will definitely be the first to know. Support for it will come yep. online. Um, ah, here's a, another one about performance. So it says, when demoing the profile or the sample game was going over 11 milliseconds, don't you need to be under that to not miss a frame in the headset? And basically, in short, yes, you need to be under 11 milliseconds or, or lower, mm -hmm. you know, like 10 milliseconds. Um, if you start to hit like 11, 12, 15, 20, you're going to start to see lag when you move your head side to side, and that's going to introduce simulation sickness. Now you're probably getting over 11 milliseconds in one of the uh, sample games because it wasn't developed for VR, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's using probably very large, very large textures. That um, still has AO included. Yeah, probably still has all lens the post-processing, <laughs> lens flares, uh, and probably very complex pixel shaders, right? Pixels are very, very expensive to render. Vertices, not so much, but pixels, on the other hand, is very expensive. So if you're going to start out 
with a, a, a template project, say you grab, uh, I don't know, realistic rendering, the, the apartment, uh, the first thing you're going to do is go in there and just rip out Check all the post-process yeah. settings, uh, turn everything down, and then slowly introduce a few features. Like maybe you introduce um, some, uh, what is it, uh, indirect, indirect dynamic lighting um, through the cube map. Mm -hmm. uh, the AO, uh, AO cube map, or maybe you turn on uh, bloom, but you really crank it down so that it's not crazy overpowering in your headset or something like that. It, then again, of course, it's enable this feature, control, or before you enable this feature, profile, see what your see what your milliseconds are, enable the feature, profile again, see how much rendering time that's taking away from you. Yeah, there's a lot of give and take. Yes, 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 a lot of give and take, a lot of give and take. Um, let me see, what else have we got on here? Let's see. Do you know Gear VR and Gear VR multiplayer is planned to be working in 4.11? Uh, didn't have a chance to talk to uh, Chris Babcock about this. He is very, very swamped on something else at the moment. So uh, Wes and I were able to get... Um, we were able to get this working We were. 4, 10, yeah, we had it working this. in like 4.9? <coughs> yeah, maybe something got... We haven't tested it in a yeah, while. Yeah, we haven't tested it in a while. This. And that project was... Uh, what had eventually came into our, mm -hmm. our, our carnival game, um, we had tried to do another game, uh, Dragon Flyers, but it just it was very motion sickness inducing. Because you're on the back of this thing <laughs> trying to shoot something. It was just very, and it was also one of our first forays into yeah. VR. Yeah. Uh, and we decided, you know what, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know, and we don't have, we don't have time to, to drill mm -hmm. down in a lot of things. So let's take a step back and let's just do... A standing only experience, mm -hmm. which is why the VR carnival games come around. Uh, came around because mm -hmm. when we do that standing experience, we just kind of chop off a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that we have to worry about, like you know, well, what happens when two players collide with one another, or what happens when you go out of the world, or what happens mm -hmm. when you do this or that. And since it's just well, you just stand here and you can turn around yeah. and you can throw stuff, then we've effectively you know <clears throat> made it a, a very safe case for us uh, to make sure that everybody can enjoy it. Um, someone asked this question, and uh, it's, I'd like to create uh, stereoscopic photospheres. A simple photosphere in the game level is nice, but I'd like to display different photospheres for each eye. Um, first off, displaying stuff in each eye individually, like if you were to have a graphic that went clockwise in one eye, and then you had one that went counterclockwise in the other eye, you would give people the craziest motion sickness ever. Yes. Um, <laughs> It's what you get when you try to draw a canvas in 2D. Yes. It doesn't work correctly in VR, so you just see it kind of <coughs> twice, right. but in slightly different opposite locations. Mm -hmm. and, you're, so you can't and your eyes can't really focus on it unless you close one eye, then you can kind of like mm -hmm. look around and be like, okay, I kind of understand what that is. Um, that's not to say that you can't use... Uh, there is uh, somebody on the forums who actually did a... Uh, it was LR, A-L-L-A-R... He did a 360 panoramic export pipeline using blueprints. Um, it's a, it runs it runs a little slow because you're literally rendering two cameras at the same time, uh, and then you can take that and you can uh, uh, upload it to YouTube and have a 360 video right. that you you spit around. Um, and that's in the mm -hmm. the forums. And let me see what else do we get. So. But unfortunately, right now, out-of-the-box support for that is just, it's not there. It's yeah. not something that we currently have. But again, with blueprints being as powerful as they are, um, LR from the forums, he built this whole thing using blueprints. So um, you should yeah, definitely that check that That's out. Cool. So, um, let's see, what else do we have here? Aha, here's a great one, and Tom and I were actually just talking about this before. It's, which INI file do you <laughs> dump the rendering command line yeah. parameters in? Right. Uh, that is covered in the guide, but it is in the uh, config slash default engine.ini. It has a subsection called render settings. Mm -hmm. You should already have that uh, in there. It's, it will list a lot of, uh, a bunch of r dot something command. Mm -hmm. So you can just uh, append it to, uh, to Just that. append it to that list. Or, or see if it's already existing. Yeah, see if it already it exists, or just dump over the top. And that's literally all you have to do in your project settings yep. to get those. And commands. then, of course, you have to restart your editor if you do that. So just... Try out all of your commands if you want. Maybe write them down and then write them in your uh, write them in your inning mm -hmm. uh, before you uh, you know restart because you mm -hmm. have to restart before the, yeah. for the changes to be picked up. Um, here's another one. Does the VR does the VR camera refactor stuff have the functionality for making the player follow the HMD when moving? Um, I mean, 
Yes, but that would have happened before because you would have been moving through the world, so your head would have been moving with you. I think they're talking about like as you walk through the world mm -hmm. in VR, like in a vibe, like a room standing uh -huh. experience, is the camera refactor stuff going to allow you to have the HMD follow you around while you're walking through the world? And that was actually the default behavior. Yeah, yeah. That's this just literally allows you to easily attach things to your HMD and then have a one-to-one -one relation between the movement of your HMD. Like, I would, I've always wanted to do this, but I just don't have the money to. I wanted to attach one and then swing it around my head and see what it looked like, like a lasso. <laughs> but, you know, that's like a $600 lasso, so I don't think that that would be a, a, a great use of our resources here. So, um, the other thing that we got to talk about is some of the cool stuff that Wes has done uh, for our... Uh, we, we had it where in the VR Carnival games where you could move around... I finally broke down and told Wes that I was giving horrible uh, uh, motion sickness when I was doing this. So Wes uh, was like, okay, okay, fair enough. And he went ahead and implemented an awesome teleporting system. Yeah, so Sam and I have here. been doing a lot of bullet train demos, and there's a mechanic in bullet train for teleporting around. Uh, I haven't actually looked at the project to see how it was built, but with blueprints, it's pretty easy to kind of just get in there and mess around with some notes and hook things up, try it out. So uh, I built two versions, actually. The first was mimicking bullet train's functionality, where you point at something in the world, and then you teleport to that object that you're pointing to. Uh, and it's just using uh, uh, line traces to see if I hit something, if I have, teleport to that point. Uh, and then there was another one that Sam and I had, had noticed. Uh, there's a VR game out there. We're not doing cool any plugs cool here, yeah. but there's a, there's a VR, VR game out there with a very interesting teleport mechanic. Uh, and looking at that, I was wondering, well, I wonder if I could do that. So uh, we built that as well. We're going to show both of those. Uh, and we're actually going to build uh, the second second method from scratch here uh, over this live stream. So okay. let's go ahead and do that, I guess. Right, let's go ahead and jump in. So, any more questions. So Wes is going to pop over to our, uh, our VR station. And um, Project up. you might have to relaunch. Kill it. Uh, it might have killed itself. No, I hope it does my project. Yeah, you need, you to, to, uh, like so I need to, need to make sure to turn on. Yeah, you know, you just then the VR preview doesn't yeah, work for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, well, no, I should say for whatever preview. reason, it's probably because you're trying to run two VR things. It's just like, no, no, you know, got it. All right. So what we have the, uh, the, the game the project the up here. Do we have that title? Yeah, it's called, a very interesting trailer. Um, I don't know. Right there. Oh, it's kind of on the fence about. Are we looking at my screen showing? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. So we have two teleport mechanics here. The first is very similar to what's done in Bullet Train. Uh, so we have uh, the left trigger here, uh, kind of look at an object in the world, point at it, and then we'll release the trigger, teleport to that object. So there's an object, a little marker that we've placed in our level here. It's just a little teleport object. My hand's kind of shaking now. But when it turns gold, it should be able to teleport. Should have made that object a little bit. <laughs> but uh, so this is similar to what's done in Bullet uh, Bullet Train. Uh, obviously, the effects are much better than mm -hmm. this little line here. But they have like a little particle effect coming out of the the hand here, shooting towards the object, and a warping effect on that. We just turned the color of the thing gold, uh, so you can see when we're actually pointing at it. Uh, the other mechanic, though, we have our gun here. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you can launch out like a little marker, and when you launch it out, when you press the trigger again. We can bring up like a little window to kind of see around. So an interesting mechanic, like if you're doing a stealth game, you can kind of turn around here, put a little marker there, and kind of look around the corner and see if there's guys there, and then teleport to it. Uh, so I thought this was a little bit of an interesting mechanic that I kind of wanted to build here together uh, with motion controllers and VR. So we're going to build that from scratch. I'm going to talk about this first one real quick just, just to show you in case you like this method uh, a little bit better. It's pretty easy. Uh, so we'll show that as well before we build. And the yeah, game that we were talking about is called the Budget Cuts. Thanks for plugging Budget them. Cuts. I don't know if that's an Unreal Engine game, but... <laughs> so, all right, let's uh, take a look at this project here. So we're going to look at that first mechanic here, uh, and then we'll start from scratch building the other one. We have about 30 minutes here, so we should be able to finish. It's pretty simple. Uh, so if I go ahead and open up my character blueprint here, Exactly. Here. Oh god, Wes has a gun. Everybody get down. <laughs> so here's our left trigger motion controller. We've added motion controllers. We've added, uh, there's some stuff in here for the other method as well. We're just going to talk through this real quick so you can kind of see if you want to emulate this. 
Uh, so we have our left uh, trigger here, and what we're doing is turning on a beam, which is going to be our little arrow here. So just kind of uh, stretch this out. You can make this a particle effect or whatever you'd like. Uh, but we're turning that on, uh, and we're setting us uh, setting a boolean to let us know that we can teleport when we click. Uh, when we release, uh, we're setting it to false. Uh, we're also checking if we can teleport, uh, etc. You can kind of see how this is set up. Uh, we're also getting the location of the object that we use our line trace, which we're going to talk about here in a second, uh, that we're going to teleport to. And what we have down here, we're using an event, custom event here, uh, which is bound to tick. Because I have both of these samples up, I've, I've kind of uh, had to work around having both methods. But eventually, essentially what we're doing is on tick checking if we're teleporting uh, to uh, perform our line trace. And we're only doing that when uh, a teleport marker is up. But essentially uh, we're doing our line trace, we're getting a start and end point getting a rotation of our beam that we're using with our left hand. Uh, if we hit something, making sure it's a teleport object that we've hit, that we've placed in our level. Uh, if so, then we can teleport. We're going to change the material, uh, et cetera. If it's not, then we're going to say we can't teleport. Uh, let's change the material back to its default object or default material. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. It looks a little bit uh, uh, convoluted here, but if you're familiar with line traces, this should all be standard stuff for you. If you are not, uh, there's a lot of documentation on uh, line traces. I believe there's a how-to actually to actually set up this line trace. And you could use this for uh, if you want to shoot out a line trace from your HMD to see if the player is looking at something, uh, such as a menu, like if you had a, had a 3D widget or something, uh, you could use a line trace for that and then return back what it, whatever it is you hit. Uh, we were just using that from the uh, beam, shooting out a line trace from that, seeing if it hit our teleport marker which is just a blueprint that we've placed in the level, uh, and it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, the other method, which we're going to start from scratch, so I'm going to create a brand new project. We're going to build that from scratch here real quick. Let's close this down, and let's create a new project. If there's any questions or anything, Sam, just let me know. Um, I'm, I'm following all this stuff around. Uh, one, one person asked us, Ah, for the VR editor, I created a fast 0.1 millisecond alert teleport. Why'd you do this? Why did we do the instant teleport? Um, the instant teleport just, it doesn't give anybody motion sickness. Yeah. Like, like doing anything where you have to move somebody around, um, like even like speeding them up or slowing them down, adding acceleration, deceleration, that's going to give people motion sickness. And teleporting people around, I was like, oh man, people aren't going to like that. It's... it's and so far, everybody has. Yeah, everyone has responded well to received. it very well. That's why I kind of agreed and wanted to explore this just to see how it would feel. After all the VR demos and stuff that we've been doing, I've seen a lot of people just naturally grasp towards this. Totally optional, solely up to you. You can add that delay in there if you want to kind of smooth the transition from popping from one position to another. Didn't, uh, uh, didn't Bullet Train have the, uh, the fade to black in between? Is I that, don't actually recall. Train? I don't recall. I don't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think don't it actually. I don't remember. think it does. Or, I don't think it does. They have a lot like of particle effects lane. that happen. Yeah. Uh, and you can see there's like, not a lot, but it's like almost an instantaneous cut without a fade to black. It's like I I'm here, boosh, now I'm over here. Yeah. And I think it's and I, I read an article actually. It's because you're seeing where it is you're going. The the process, uh, the way that your brain processes that doesn't induce as much motion sickness as you would think because you know where you're going to when you teleport. You know the orientation as well. Mm -hmm. you, shouldn't, you shouldn't teleport someone and then have them rotate it at whatever no. degrees no. because then it's just going to lose it. So we're going to create a new project. Uh, it's been a while since we've done some uh, live uh, creation here. So we're going to try to get through this here together. Hopefully we won't miss anything. So let's go ahead and create a new project. If you're following along, we're using the first person template. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have starter content enabled. Uh, choose a save location, give it a name. I'm just going to call it Twitch. Project, so take a second for it to load up. And once it's loaded, there's going to be a couple things that we're going to want to fix real quick uh, before we actually jump into building the teleport mechanic here. Uh, the first is by default, this template has a 2D HUD drawn on top of it, so we're going to turn that off real quick. There's some crosshairs that are shown. Uh, so we're going to turn that off uh, once we get in here. 
Now it uses Slate too, the, the old method of doing UI. Some people still use it, but UMG is traditionally the way to go now. So inside of our project here, if you're following along, we can go into the Blueprints folder. There's a first person HUD Blueprint. You can double click, open that up. And all we're gonna do in here is this event receive draw HUD, which is actually drawing the crosshairs that appear on screen, as you can see the text there. And hold Alt and left click on this to delete that and break it, break the connection. Let's compile and save and close this out just so that it doesn't draw our HUD anymore. So if I play now, should be no HUD, just fine. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we need to add motion controllers uh, to our player character here, because right now we don't. We're using mouse and keyboard, so we're going to add some motion controllers to our first-person character blueprint here. So we can double-click, open that up, and inside of it, uh, we'll hop over to the components window here and add some components. Click this, and we'll say uh, motion controller, sort of just motion, motion controller. And we'll just call this, abbreviated LMC for left motion controller. By default, the left hand is uh, what is being assigned. So we can select this and hit Control W to duplicate it. Not three times, but just one more time. Uh, we'll rename this and say RMC for right motion controller and make sure that we assign this as the right. So we have both of our motion controllers in place. There's one other thing that we need to do on the class defaults for this. Uh, click class defaults. Under pawn here, there's a use controller rotation. Y'all, we're gonna pull this off. Uh, if we left this on, as we turn our head, our motion controllers would go along for the ride. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna turn that off so that our motion controller can act independently of our HMD. So we'll compile that. And let's see, the next thing that we wanna do on the viewport here, uh, unfortunately, we're not gonna be working in any IK solutions for our hands or anything yet, or animating our hands. Uh, for our character model here, I do wanna get into that eventually, but for now, uh, we're going to remove that. We're just going to have our gun on screen. So we're going to take our gun here, left click, drag, and drop that on the right motion controller so it'll be attached to our right motion controller. Uh, we're then going to take this mesh and we're going to delete it so that we have just the gun. And when I compile, it's going to give me an error. Uh, if I go down to the target here, the compiler results, by default, this template has an animation that plays when the character shoots. Uh, there's some other script in here as well for. Uh, determining where the projectile should spawn. Uh, you, should, you guys should be familiar with this if you look at all at this uh, template. Uh, we're actually going to delete all of this because uh, we're going to do it a different way. You could use a gun offset, get the locate or rotation of the character, add an offset to determine where we want to spawn, but we're going to do something a little bit uh, easier. So I'm going to take all of this and hit delete. And there's also a sound effect that plays when we shoot. We could keep that if we want, but I'm going to delete that as well. So the, all we have is this spawn projectile here. So I'm going to right click on the graph and we're going to search for motion trigger. And we want to use the motion controller right trigger. So we have that. And when I press it, we're going to spawn uh, our object. It's going to ask where we want to spawn it. Uh, we're going to cheat and we're going to go back to our graph here or our viewport. We're going to add a arrow component, so just an arrow gun marker, like so. I'm gonna move it, left click and drag it on top of our gun. And then we're gonna move it up a little bit. This is gonna be the location at which we spawn our object. Just much easier than having to get the location of the player and then adding offsets. It's just always gonna spawn from the location of this marker. So I'm gonna change the snap size to this and just move it up in front of the gun. It doesn't have to be perfect. Feel free to fine tune it later if you'd like. So something like that, it will spawn from there. Come back to our graph. If you take our gun marker here, just drag that in, drag off of it, get world transform. Like so, and plug that in, and it will always spawn from that location now. Okay, uh, the other things that we need to do now actually uh, is uh, we need to add a static mesh to represent our portal. So, whenever we press the button, and launch our projectile into the world to create our marker. And press the button again to bring up our portal to see where it is we're going to potentially teleport to. So I'm going to create a static mesh to represent that portal. Now you could use a UMD, UMG widget for this as well, instead of a static mesh and applying a material to it uh, to represent the portal view. Uh, you could do it either way. It's just totally on you how you'd like to do it. But we're going to use a static mesh because it's a little bit easier. Take the static mesh and attach it to the gun. And over in the details panel here, 
We'll search for a cube. Should be a shape cube we can use. Like so viewport, take a look at it. Now it's super big, so I'm gonna just go to the scale here on the X and just say something like point, 0.01, something like that. Now you could also create externally uh, a better looking static mesh, some kind of circular portal or something if you'd like. Sam was working on a material for this, uh, if you wanna talk about that at all, uh, that you could apply that has some kind of uh, effect to it as well. But for our purposes in demoing this, we could just use a Yeah, it was just a like some refraction and some masking to kind of make it look like you had carved a portal in the world. It wasn't anything too uh, too crazy. Yeah, so I'm just going to angle it off to the right here of our gun. You could put it however you'd like. Now there's a material that is currently assigned to it. We're going to use a uh, custom material here in a second. Uh, so I'm just going to compile this and save. Dock this up here. So we're going to use the, the first person projectile here as our marker. So I'm going to open this up real quick, make some quick modifications to this. So double click on it. Uh, first thing that we're going to want to do is change the velocity at which we shoot uh, this projectile. So I'm going to go to the components, select the projectile, initial speed, max speed. We're going to bump this down to half this. We'll say 1500 by 1500, like so. Should bounce is okay. I think that's fine. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a on projectile bounce event, uh, which is going to be pretty cool for us. So if we click this plus sign, Add a node for us, and then hold control, take our projectile into the graph. And if we drag off of this, there's a uh, handy little function we can call stop movement. Stop movement immediately. So when we bounce, stop our movement. You can add a delay to this if you'd like, let it bounce a little bit and then eventually uh, appear uh, in your world where you want, but we're gonna stop it as soon as it lands, or as soon as it bounces. Uh, next thing that we need to do, if we go over to the viewport here, we're going to add a camera to this to represent the viewport uh, for our portal. So I'm just going to add a quick component, camera component. Like so. And I'm going to take our camera component and just pop it up just a little bit. Something like 90, I guess. Feel free to tweak this if you'd like. Uh, and then the next thing that we need to do is a uh, add another component called a scene capture. So scene capture component 2D, and this is what's going to be fed to our material that we're going to apply to the portal in our first person character. So this will all start to come together here in a second. So we're going to add this scene capture component 2D, and we're going to attach that to the camera. Let's actually just move that up 90 as well. Like that. So we compile. Uh, over in the details panel, it's asking for a target or a texture target, uh, the temporary render target that can be used uh, by the editor. We hop over back to the content browser. We need to create that and specify that here real quick. Uh, it's really easy. We can right click and under materials, is it? Materials and textures. Yeah, there it is. So a render target is what we're gonna create. And we'll just call this camera view, something like that. Uh, you can double click on this, open it up. There's some options in here for the uh, size X and size Y, uh, additional com compression settings. We're gonna leave everything as default, but you can come in here and kind of modify these uh, to your liking a little bit later if you'd like. So just wanted to show that real quick. And we can right click on that texture and create a material out of it. We'll leave the default name, I think that's fine. Let's go ahead and save everything real quick just in case. So back in our first person projectile here for that uh, texture target, let's go ahead and assign that. So we'll select it here, like this, and then point to it, like so, and compile. And that's all we need to do for our uh, projectile. Now it has a camera, it has a scene capture that's going to be fed to our material that we can apply to our portal. So let's go ahead and do that too as well. So back in our first person character here under the materials for our static mesh. Let's go ahead and assign that material that we just created. So we'll select this, and assign that. So it's gonna appear black here, but once we get in game, uh, this will update uh, with the script that we provide here in a moment. So we can compile. And let's go ahead, let's rename this too, just for clarity, something better than static mesh. We'll just call it portal. Okay, uh, there's one other thing that I forgot that we need to do on our first person projectile here. Uh, if we go to the class defaults, 
Uh, there is an initial lifespan uh, set to three in this template, uh, which will mean this will time out and destroy itself after three seconds, which we don't want. So we're going to zero this back out like so. Make sure that we do that. Compile and save. And let's go ahead and close this. Uh, we can do the script for this now. This should only take uh, a little bit of time here. We're almost done. Uh, so we have, let's max this over just a little bit. So we have our right trigger. Uh, we're going to need to create some uh, variables to keep track of here. Where is my, my blueprint window? <laughs> I'm using your setup, Sam, so I don't know where your my blueprint window is. You actually closed it. There it is. Oh. <laughs> so Looks we're going like to need some variables. It's all right. It's all right, Sam. I forget. Uh, we're going to need some variables to keep track of. First variable we're going to create uh, will be of the Boolean type. We'll call it uh, is teleporting. So, and let's move this over just a little bit more. Because what we want to have happen is when we press the trigger the first time, uh, we want to spawn our projectile in the world. The next time that we press it, we want to bring up our portal. So we're not going to want to spawn another projectile. We're going to want to bring up our portal so the players can see where it is they're going to teleport to. And then when they release the trigger at that point, teleport to that location. So what we need to do is let's hold B and left click, create a branch. Drop this up, like so. And we'll take our is teleporting. Just drag and drop that on top of the condition, like so. Let's go and compile real quick. Make sure that this is false by default, which it looks like it is. So we are currently not teleporting. So what we'll do is spawn our object here. Okay. Uh, we do want to create uh, a variable out of the object that we spawn. So we're going to right click on the return value of this uh, spawn actor here, promote that to a variable. We'll call that teleport point. Something like that. So that we have reference to where it is that we launch that. Next thing that we'll do, we'll take our is teleporting, alt, drag that in. I'll create a set node, connect this up, and then we can check this. So the next time we press it, we'll come through, we'll see that is teleporting is true. So we can add a script to that. Uh, what we'll do, we'll take our portal, hold control, drag that in, drag off of it, and we want to say set hidden in game. So set hidden in game. So one thing I forgot to do actually for this portal, if we select it, the components, we want to make sure that it is off by default or hidden in game by default. And we'll turn it on uh, only when we have the ability to teleport. So we'll check that hidden in game. It's hidden by default. Let's go ahead and compile. Uh, let's connect our true up to the set hidden in game, like so. And then we're going to create uh, another Boolean here. So is teleporting, we're going to create another Boolean variable. This one we'll call can teleport. And we're going to set, uh, set that here. So we'll alt drag that in, connect that up, set that to true. And you'll see why we're using this additional Boolean here in a second. So let's compile, just save it just in case. So we have the ability uh, to press the trigger. Uh, what happens when we re release it? We can go ahead and start that uh, portion of script here. Uh, so we'll create a branch. We'll be left click, create a branch, connect the release. Uh, we can then take our can teleport, drag that on top. Like so uh, then what we'll need to do is take our teleport point here and hold control, drag that in. We're going to drag off of it and we'll say uh, get world uh, location. So get world location. Let's just get the location of the sphere. You could also, in the projectile, add uh, another, like an arrow component to kind of dictate where it is you're going to teleport to instead of the actual uh, sphere. So what, we're, what will happen right now is we'll teleport to the location of the sphere. Uh, our marker, but if you wanted to push that out a little bit, you could add another component to represent your uh, spawning location, kind of like what we did for the gun, gun marker. I think in the other version that I did for this, I did that, but I think this is fine. We'll teleport directly to the sphere for now. 
Uh, the other thing that we need to do is before we do anything, we want to make sure that we do have a teleport point. So we're going to drag off of this and say, is valid? The question mark there. Make sure that it is valid. And that's going to be coming uh, off of our true here. Just connect that up like so. Bring this over, bring this over. So if it is valid, uh, we're going to uh, right click, set actor location. So set actor location. So connect up the is valid. Like so it's asking for the new location. Let's get the location of our sphere. So we can plug that directly in like so. Target is self, so our character blueprint uh, is what we want to move. Uh, so that's all we need to do for that. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is, let's take our portal at that point. Control, drag that in. Drag off of this and say set hidden in game so we can hide the portal because we've already teleported at that point. Drag that up. Hidden. So uh, once we've actually teleported, we can take our Teleport point, full control, drag that in, and destroy it because we've already teleported. So let's just drag off this and say destroy actor. So, that up. so. And then what we'll do is uh, reset some of these booleans that we have. So we have can teleport and is teleporting. We'll take both of those, copy them, paste them. We'll set those both back to false. So our teleport mechanic does work. Uh, see, there's a couple other things that we need to do. If I move this down. We want to be able to control our portal. So as you saw when we were demoing a little while ago, uh, using the right motion controller, being able to kind of look around at the location of our marker. So what we'll do for that is let's right click. Uh, again, this, there might be a better way to do this instead of tick, but for now I think we'll just use tick just to kind of illustrate this. We'll take our can teleport here. We'll control drag that in. Begin left click to create a branch. Set this up. Set this up with the condition. Like so. And if we can teleport, what we'll do is we'll take our teleport point. We'll control drag that in. Uh, we're then going to get the location of the camera. So I'm going to get the location of the camera. And let's go ahead and take our portal, or excuse me, not our portal, our right motion controller. So let's hold control, drag that in. And let's drag off of this and say get world rotation. Like so. And let's take, uh, let's get the camera here. And we're going to say set. Location. Now, there's a couple options here. You can do set world location and rotation. If this, if you wanted to actually move the location of the marker uh, in the world, you could use uh, the set world location and rotation. Um, but I think what we'll do instead, we'll take, we'll just do the rotation so that you can kind of move around, but you can't move the portal up and down. Uh, if you'd like to, go ahead and use the get world location. But let's actually delete that. We're just going to set rotation. Set world rotation, like this up, and use the rotation of our right motion control. So we're only controlling the rotation of the camera, not the location. Compile and save. And I think that's all we need to do, hopefully. Let's test this out. Let's go ahead and try and test this out. How are we on time, Sam? Uh, it's 3.01. All right. We're doing fine. Let's see. Preview. It's not fun when there's nobody you can smack in the head with the motion controller. Right? Right. Let's see. So hopefully. I didn't have all of my notes, but I think I did it right. Let's see. So there's our gun. We can kind of shoot out a marker. Press the trigger again. There's our portal that's following our rotation. Again, if you wanted to set world location and rotation, that would allow you to kind of pan up pan down and kind of move it around. Oh, but, so it's like uh, those cameras that they have in metal, one of the metal gears. Right, that you so camera. Oh. Picture, picture this is like a spy game and there's somebody around the corner you can like shoot at the ground there and kind of like, is there somebody over there? Now obviously we have this happening. 
What we'd probably want to do is add a collision box around this so that when you go over something like this, it kind of disappears or something. But this kind of demonstrates you know, the mechanic a little bit. And it looks like it's, like it's working. So maybe we should go over there. Like, oh, is there somebody over there? No. Nope. So just another way to provide uh, movement. It's a lot less jarring than using the D-pad to move around uh, using this teleport mechanic. Uh, so I can kind of also do it while it's in air. Yeah. Oh, that must be jarring. <laughs> Even I, I can feel it. I don't think I can do that again if I try it. I didn't, I didn't practice that, but there you go. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, some, just some ideas you can use to kind of explore with movement mechanics. Now there is one other thing about this. There's some errors in here. Uh, what is this? Set world rotation. Oh. So we're getting some log spam here. What we could do to get rid of that is just drag off of this and say is valid. Make sure that we do have that object. Set this up. If it's not valid, then it won't try to do this anymore. So that will get rid of that log spam that you're seeing right there. The other thing that we could add uh, to this if we have a little bit more time, this will only take a second, I think. Yeah, yeah, you could. Uh, we could right click and we could say, uh, let's say motion trigger. We could use the left motion controller, so the left trigger. We could take this and we could say, uh, whenever we press, uh, press this button, we could create another Boolean variable called cancel. So we could set that here, alt drag that in, set that to true. Kind of move this up here. And we could take our teleport, so control, drag that in, drag off of this is valid, make sure that it's valid. If we do have a teleport point, uh, at that point we can connect our is valid up to here so that we are setting our portal to hidden in game. We are no longer teleporting using our set actor location. We're just hiding our portal and destroying that marker that we've created. So we would need to add if you all drag this in, resetting that back to uh, false at that point. So go ahead and this boolean we probably actually don't need. I think I was doing it a different way before now that I look at it, but uh, this should still work. So if I have both motion controllers here and I shoot out a marker, I can hit the left trigger to cancel it at that point, and then I can shoot out another one, kind of look around. So you can cancel it at any point in case you change your mind. So. Just an idea of how you can do some different motion mechanics and blueprint uh, in VR with motion controllers. Uh, it's nothing fancy, but could communicate uh, just how you could probably do that. So uh, that's actually all I got okay. for now. Right. So hopefully you guys cool. can use that and play with it. And... Yeah, it in one go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There you go. No, no going back to your notes. So we got a couple of questions that have come through. Um, there's one I wanted to point to uh, to Tom. And basically the question is, can I use Tom's VR first person template to set up my character and implement the motion controller fix for multiplayer, but then only use blueprints after initial setup? It, you can, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. You can as, you might as well make your blueprint project uh, and then go to file, add code to project and add the file that you need for your fix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that will turn it into a C++ project for you as well. And then you don't have any of my other like C++ setup code mm -hmm. that you probably are not interested in. So just go to file, add code to project, and uh, I haven't seen a fix, but it's a based on actor or uh, maybe what was a pawn. The code? It's a code, okay. a code snippet from Nick. It's the authority over the motion controller, which that I wasn't sure how to set in Blueprint, but the, the script actually. It's right here, it's just basically, it's right now, if memory serves me correctly, the motion controllers are just spamming out mm -hmm. and it's like player one is the guy who has it. So it just keeps spamming and then mm -hmm. the first person to connect, usually player one, he the, takes it over. The authority. Yeah, yeah, and he has the authority mm -hmm. over So you it need now. to set the, uh, the authority to be the author of one motion controller and right. then the client uncheck that essentially in blueprint uncheck that uh, for the client in, in script or, or in code. I'm not quite sure how you would do that. But. So from the looks of it, it's, it's a change in the motion controller. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, you can just go to add, file add, add code to project, extend the motion controller. You don't mm -hmm. need any of my code because that you will you will not use it anyway. Um, except, well, to compile it, you might need to uh, have the uh, module set up. Potentially, yeah. So, uh, but I've covered that in the getting started guide specifically. So if you go to the, my getting started guide, you go to using VR and C++. I have specifically uh, uh, listed the 
kind of code that you need for uh, <coughs> get your own clean project working in VR. Hmm. Uh, so you don't need to get that way if you don't want. Okay. You know, eventually, I think we'll get to the point with it that it functions just like regular controllers, so that the authority is passed from the server to the client correctly. So yeah, and that's probably... Yeah. We don't have any issues with two well, controllers most of, connected. So most of our stuff is, is, I mean, the only VR sample that we have is Couch Nights, but that's controller-based, mm -hmm. so... This is all new stuff. Yeah, this is all, <laughs> this is all brand new, brand new territory over here. Yeah. Um, one of the other questions that I saw a couple times coming through the chat was um, basically about the render detector and VR. Hmm. And any tips for making render detector portals perform decently in VR? I guess people were having issues with performance mm -hmm. with them a little earlier on. Right. Um, we didn't test it other than in that level that we were in. If your performance is starting to become a problem, the first thing I would do is just crank down the size of the yeah. render texture. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, by default, it's already pretty low. It's like yeah, 256, like 256. So that's pretty low already. And I, we I can reduce post processing because I think it uses post processing when it's seen depth your target. Mm -hmm. So you. Uh, the settings are there, yeah. The settings are there, so you should be okay. able to mm -hmm. turn off a lot and of the And the other thing that I did when I was messing around with uh, making a material, which actually took me longer to, to mess <laughs> around with, and it actually took you to build the system, I think. <laughs> Um, is I was using completely unlit materials and then yeah. recalculating the light myself using a dot product and a right. camera vector because I was just making the light as cheap as I possibly could make it. Yeah. If you have that for, uh, that portal, one one nice trick maybe is uh, to have, disable just all of the post processing, have it render on low, low, low resolution, uh, but then uh, just add some auto fancy effects to your materials mm -hmm. so it may be a little noisy. So you sort of like add some uh, some effects so that user doesn't recognize that yeah. it is actually pretty... Uh, going gorgeous. back to the UE3 days, one of the things that I used to do, a little trick I used to do to give me a very, very smooth looking render, det uh, render detector if I needed was I would just rip out everything in the post-process chain and then just put a simple blur on that thing. So mm. then it actually right. blurs yeah. the source. And then when I sample that inside of my material, then I can do all types of cool things on it, but it's already been blurred through the source very cheaply. Um, so that's exactly what you were talking about, something else that you can do. Um, and the trick here, uh, what I guess people should take away from this, is that there's always different ways mm -hmm. to leverage your rendering options. And uh, again, the best thing to do with VR is start from the bottom and then yeah. slowly start adding until you can make it back up to the, uh, to you get the features that you want or you know, you're happy with the trade-off that you made. Mm -hmm. So let's see what else we got here. And yeah, and for the uh, performance questions, we might just throw this in a level uh, that's got some more content yeah. in it, and then just see what the performance is. Because I really yeah. can't say, oh, yeah, sure, the see performance can be how, awesome. Because we haven't tested this yet, but how this would work you know, using 3D widgets versus a static mesh. Because I did it both ways, but I, and I felt the static mesh was easier. One of the other things out. that I wanted to, uh, to touch on with this, too, is if you're using this type of methodology, like if this is a core mechanic of your game, then everything that you design around your game is going to have to have a, a smaller footprint or not be as performance intensive as the portal effect. So if the portal is the main part of your main gameplay mechanic is this portal, you're going to want to put all your kind of rendering resources into that to make it look, you know, the, the best. And then maybe try to pull back on the environmental size, like the size of the textures or the mm -hmm. complexity of the materials and lighting and things of that nature, you know, making like Wes said before, constantly That's making those trade-offs. So, um, looks like that's about it for the, uh, for the questions that uh, I have, uh, that I have specific answers to. Okay. Um, let me just pop back over here to the chat, see if anybody else has got anything. Yeah, and as always, you guys can add anything to the, the form thread for today's Twitch stream. We'll take a look and see if we can respond there. No, I'm not seeing anything else. Right. So, all right, that looks like it's we're going to go ahead and wrap this up now. Um, if you guys have got any other questions or uh, we didn't answer your questions because we didn't see it, I apologize, but please post the form. It's to answer hub and somebody will get around to helping you out as, uh, as best they can. So thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody, and we hope to see you guys next time. Right. Thanks, see ya. See ya.